This Wednesday, The Matrix Revolutions. Combining tickets and DVD sales, The Matrix and The Matrix Reloaded have harvested around a billion dollars. Bravo's Scanning the Movies devoted an entire hour to the fascination that many in religious and cultural studies have for the Wachowski Brothers science fiction film series, which is the first in Star Wars to have so thoroughly influenced and infiltrated the North American imagination. Here's Bill Beard, film studies professor at the University of Alberta. When you factor in what the basic theme of the film is, can you trust the reality around you? What is the meaning of the reality of around you? What's your status in the reality around you? I think those are questions that, existentially speaking, most people have some kind of an interest in. And I think The Matrix has certainly found a way to tap into that in an environment that's intriguing to young people. The Matrix grabbed the imagination of untold millions of people and became the best-selling DVD ever. Not just because in the best of the science fiction tradition it was addressing big ideas, but more because it was preaching a worldview, or actually an anti-worldview, that everything we know is an exploitative lie designed to enslave the planet. You can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. But you know, The Matrix wasn't the first to do that. Yeah, it had amazing martial arts, great techno-gothic look, and eye-smackingly brain-breaking special effects. But long before the Wachowski brothers hit it big with Keanu and company, back in 1989, another innovative genre director thundered that the world is a lie. The man was John Carpenter. The film was They Live. What do these things want, and why are they here? You still don't get it, do you, boy? They have recruited the rich and the powerful. They're running the whole show. Wake up! They're all about you. Blind on us to the truth. As long as they are not discovered. I don't know what they are or where they came from, but we gotta stop them. Stay away from me. Carpenter doesn't make films to show your mom, not unless you want to scare her to death. Halloween, Escape from New York, The Prince of Darkness. His only cuddly film was the high-grossing Starman with Jeff Bridges. But he made one of the finest American films of the 1980s, the vastly underrated and misunderstood The Thing. I don't know what the hell's in there. It's weird and pissed off, whatever it is. Both The Matrix and They Live are anti-consumerist and anti-authoritarian. The politics of the film are, to begin with, of strongly anti-capitalist and strongly anti-commercial. And the film more or less tells people that they have to get out of this false life that they're living and go to the barricades and try to overthrow the system that's feeding them these lies. That's practically Marxist. In some ways, that's the most revolutionary political message to come out of a Hollywood movie in, I don't know, 50 years. Of course, the film can't afford to keep that politics. Austerity and revolution, you know, living in a basement on on canned beans and, and going out and planning on, I don't know what dynamiting power poles or something is not something that's actually going to sell. In the Matrix, in the world of lies, Morpheus, Trinity, and the other revolutionaries appear to be wearing expensive designer brand clothing, all of them looking like models or movie stars. But in the world of truth, they're dressed humbly in little more than rags, and they don't eat like kings either. Here you go, buddy. Breakfast of champions. If you close your eyes, it almost feels like you're eating runny eggs. You know, a bowl of snuff. Cypher, the Judas of the Matrix, sells out for cash, for fame, and for steak, a meal of bloody flesh, an excellent symbol for betrayal. I want to be rich, someone important, like an actor. Ignorance is bliss. Did you notice what Agent Smith calls him, by the way? Do we have a deal, Mr. Reagan? So the Matrix is a giant conspiracy to keep humanity feeding, working, buying, and dying rather than building its own freedom. Flashback to 1989, to Carpenter's They Live. They own everything, the whole goddamn planet. They can do whatever they want. What's wrong with having it good for a change? Now they're going to let us have it good if we just help them. They're going to leave us alone. Let's make some money. You can have a little taste of that good life, too. Now I know you want it. Hell, everybody does. That cutie pie was one of the many humans in They Live who hide their knowledge of our enslavement because they've been paid off with scraps from the alien dinner table. Not a bad snapshot of how many people in the Mulroney, Reagan, Bush, Thatcher, and Cretchen years have happily supported shredding public services and putting the arms race on steroids so long as their taxes were cut and their BMWs and SUVs were safe in their gated communities. I got a wife and two kids back in Detroit. Haven't seen them in six months. Steel mills were laying people off left and right. They finally went under. We gave the steel companies a break when they needed it. You know what they gave themselves? Raises. 
The golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rule. They close one more factory, we should take a sledge to one of their fancy foreign cars. No wonder They Live failed at the box office. Corporate media doesn't cover anti-capitalist films, surprise. The leading science fiction film magazine Starlog dropped all coverage of the film after its debut, probably thanks to arch anti-communist publisher Cary O'Quinn. And unlike the expensive The Matrix, They Live didn't have cutting-edge visual effects. Made for only three million bucks, the film was inexpensive even by 1989 standards. But where The Matrix preaches anti-consumerism so subtle that millions don't even catch it, people just remember the fancy clothes and kung fu kicking, not rags and bowls of gruel, They Live doesn't let the viewer escape its message. Carpenter's protagonist is an out-of-luck construction worker named Nada, a drifter during the Reagan recession. I deliver a hard day's work for the money, I just want the chance, it'll come. I believe in America, I follow the rules. Everybody's got their own hard times these days. Nada, played with honest realism by pro wrestler Rowdy Roddy Piper, and his friend Frank, played by brilliant character actor Keith David, eat and stay at an outdoor soup kitchen in Tent Town straight out of the Grapes of Wrath. But the camp organizers are hiding something, and someone is hacking into local TV signals. There is a signal broadcast every second of every day through our television sets. Even when the set is turned off, they want benign indifference. They want us drugged. We could be pets. We could be food. But all we really are is livestock. After a savage police assault on the poor camp, Nada escapes. He returns to collect whatever the organizers had been hiding. He finds it. And it's sunglasses. The sunglasses screen out the illusion and reveal the real world. Signs, books, posters lose their text, going all white except for the slogans that are branded onto them. The sign above a magazine rack says, Stay asleep, while the magazine covers and pages read one after the other, Do, Do not, not question, question authority. authority, Honor apathy, Reward indifference, Doubt humanity, Watch TV, No thought, Submit. <laughs> A travel agency billboard of a bikinied woman with arched back lying in the surf reveals itself as marry and reproduce. A dollar bill says, this is your god. And when Nada beholds the cityscape, it's Dante's metropolis, a giant slave pen of mind control messages. Even the traffic light beams in order. Finally, Nada sees the face of the enemy a businessman reading a newspaper. But his face is that of a half-decayed cadaver. This alien is one of thousands infesting and controlling the planet. Creatures are trading wealth, power. You mean people are joining up with them? Most of us just sell out right away. Then all of a sudden we get promoted. In one of the most politically chilling lines of the film, especially in our age of mass firings called downsizing and outsourcing, someone realizes they're free enterprisers. The Earth is just another developing planet. They are third world. They Live makes no secret of its politics. Which isn't to say that the film isn't fun. They Live is a lot funnier than The Matrix, but even its levity is symbolic of something larger. Nada, Spanish for nothing, suggesting what individual citizens are when they're reduced to wage slave consumers, tries to convince his friend Frank, a name meaning candid, that Earth has been conquered, that they're all thralls in a, well, matrix of illusion. But Frank knows Nada has just escaped from a bank where he and his shotgun have cracked open a trunk of whoop alien ass. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Oh, Frank's afraid Nada's snapped and become a mass murderer. How many people did you kill? I'm giving you a choice. Either put on these glasses or start eating that trash can. Not this year. So they fight for five minutes in a wrestling punching match so entertaining it can go fist to foot with anything in the Matrix. And of course, it's all a symbol about how difficult it is to get people to shift their worldview, especially about oppression. No one wants to let go of the lies they've been indoctrinated into their entire lives. It's what they believe in. So before you see The Matrix Revolutions, check out John Carpenter's film.
It's minimalist, more like The Matrix meets The Sixth Sense. But for a hell of a ride, some great laughs, and a message more important now than ever in our age of NAFTA, the World Trade Organization, and the so-called War on Terror, see They Live. They've been told that we're commies trying to bring down the government. But when you leave your house to rent it, make sure you're wearing your sunglasses. For definitely not the opera, this is Minister Faust in Edmonton.